Okay, so we're going to continue with exponential modeling, uh, same formula we've been dealing with. And this first example says, suppose that you deposit $400 into a savings account that receives 12% interest every three years. So $400 is our initial amount, 12% gives us our R, and this was the first time we've seen a change in P. As this percentage is happening every three years, so P equals three years. So this is first going to ask us to change it and figure out, well, if it grows by 12% every three years, what percent does it grow by every one year? And most people would say it must be 4%. 4%, 4%, 4%, 4% three times would make 12%, but percents aren't that straightforward. So I'm going to show you how you figure that out. You have your initial amount of 400. We're growing by 12% every three years. If you want to know the one year rate, you essentially plug a one into here and calculate this. So A will equal 400, and then I'm going to do 1.12. That's what one plus point twelve is. To the one third power. Oops, that's not gonna be right. My one third power in parentheses. The one third power, and it actually changes it to one point oh three eight four nine. So one point oh three eight, we'll say. To the T power. So what I did there is I just changed that to one. To, to convert this three, per, three year percentage of 12% to a one year percentage. So now this is technically over one, and we know it grows by 3.8% per year, per single year now. Okay? So this formula, other than the fact that I rounded that a bit, and the original formula will give me the same answer to follow up questions. And a lot of times they want you to change the, the percentage that they gave you to figure out that percentage on a different scale. So the 12% growth every three years, they wanted that converted. It was close to 4%, but not quite. It's not as even a, as a split as you would think it would be. By what percent does it grow every month? So let's go with the original again, because that's not a rounded answer. Now this says every month. And so we can't have T up top in one unit and the denominator of three years in another. So I'm going to make the three years 36 months, I guess that is. 36 months. Now my T is in months. And so now I plug in one there, and this part will tell me the monthly growth. So I'm going to rewrite my formula. I'm going to type in 1.12 to the... 1 over 36 power, and that tells me that my new base is 1.003 to the t over 1 month, which I should have been specific over here. This is one year. This is 3.8% growth per year. This is 0.3% growth per month then. And again, all four of these formulas will give you the same follow-up answers, again, other than the fact that we rounded those. So you'd always want to try to use the unrounded ones. But they just give you a feel for what the monthly growth is versus the yearly growth versus the every three-year growth. So when they go and ask you a follow-up question, I would use the original function. How long will it take to grow to 1,000? So there's my 1,000, equal 400, 1.12, to the t over 3, and we're just solving this like we have in the past. So we divide 400 on both sides. 1,000 divided by 400 is 2.5. To get the exponent out of there, because we're trying to solve the t, we're going to log both sides. Which allows us to bring that exponent out in front, so it's the log of 2.5 equals t over 3 times the log of 1.12. We're going to divide the log of 1.12 over. So t over 3 will equal the log of 2.5 on my calculator divided by the log of 1.12 on my calculator. Log of 2.5 gives me crazy decimal. I'll do 8.09. I'm going to write down 8.09 
but when I go to multiply both sides by 3, I'm not tripling 8.09. I'm going to triple that exact number. So just take that number and hit times. So we'll take that exact answer, multiply it by 3. So T will equal 24.26. And the formula I used was this one with 3 years. So my answer is in years. Had I used this month equation, my answer would have been in months. It would have been equivalent to 24.26 years, but it would have been a certain number of months equivalent to that. Um, and then lastly, how much will be in the account after 10 years? So now that's the T that they're telling you to wait. They're telling you to wait 10 years and, say, and see what then will the final amount be. So 1.12 to the 10 over 3 just tells you you're waiting 10 years, and this you just type in. A is already by itself. So you'll get your final amount equals 400 times 1.12 to the parentheses 10 thirds power. And that's $583.61. You shouldn't have to tell you how to round money. To the nearest hundred makes sense because it's pennies. Okay. Exercise 2 kind of breaks down an example. So this starting population of rabbits is 500. It was growing because that growth factor is over 1, by 13%, 1.13 would be 1 plus 0.13. And the 3T is a little bit tricky because our formula is T over something. So 3T is the equivalent to T over what? And it should be, if you think that through, it should be 1 third. 1 divided by a third will give you the 3. This is a, a little bit of a different format. That gives us the frequency that it grows by 13% per year. So in one year's time, it grows by 13% three times, which means it's happening every one-third of a year. Every one-third of a year. Um, Rewrite the equation such, such that it uses the rate of yearly growth. So if I want to do this, I'm just going to plug in 1 to, that, to, to um, that rewritten version of it. So the 1.13, just like we did above, to the 3 times 1 power is 3. And that gives me a new base of 1.44. So it's A equals 500 times 1.44-ish to the T power. So that's 44% a year. 13% three times within one year is equivalent to 44% overall. And if we want the monthly growth, so I would probably, um, you'd want to plug in one one month, which you can't really do. This is definitely in years. So one month equals one twelfth of a year. So I'm going to plug in one twelfth. So one point one three raised to the three times one twelfth power, and that will give me the monthly growth rate. T over one month, and this is T over one year. That was your yearly growth rate. That was your one month growth rate. So in this one, T is in months, and this one, T is in years. But again, that is the 13% rate that you're give it, getting three times within a year's time span. So that's almost like the frequency. If I give another version of the formula down here, if you have a coefficient out in front, like this one was happening every three years, so it was increasing by 12% total over a three-year period. This one was growing by 13% three times within the year, um, which is a lot, a lot more. So this gives us a frequency formula um, to deal with. So a little bit different than the T over P, um, but the F gives you the frequency and the number of times per year that the growth rate is happening. 
So this one right here, this is a crazy question, but um, it's the population of blackbirds where T represents the number of years since the study began. So just straightforward, population starts at 750 and this says it's growing by 16% every one year. That's technically T over one. So here's a whole bunch of different ways of rearranging your thing in terms of the monthly growth rate, the population of red-winged blackbirds can be best approximated by. So this is saying T still in years. They are definitely keeping T in years. So this one says it's growing by 1.2% every year. Is that the same? This one says it's growing by 1.2% 12 times per year, which means um, every, every month. If it's 12 times a year, that's happening every month. So that would be the growth rate in months. This one says it's growing by 16% 12 times per year. This is the frequency version of the formula, so 12 times per year, which is, again, every month. And this one says it's growing by 16% um, every 12 months. So um, or I'm sorry, T is in years, so that would be every 12 years. Okay, so T they kept in years. So this is every one year, this is every 12 years, this is 12 times per year, this is 12 times per year. So which one even sounds equivalent to growing by 16% every one year? Growing by 16% every 12 years is definitely different. Growing by 16% every month is not the same as growing by 16% every one year. Um, the only one that makes sense because it's every month and it's a lesser percentage is B, or is 2. So that was a question on a region. It's pretty tricky. Okay, last few here. If the population of a town is decreasing by 4% per year and started with 12,500 residents, which of the following is its projected population? So this is starting with 12,500. This is just plugging into our um, formula. It's decreasing, so 1 minus, by 4%. Um, and it's, that's per year, so that's T over one year. So they want to know what will its population be in 10 years. You're just plugging in a 10 up there, typing it in. 12,500 times 0.96 to the 10th power, 8310. Exercise five. The stock price of wind power ink is increasing at four percent per year. So the wind power ink is increasing. The wind power. The so one plus point oh four. And this is per week, so that would be T over one week. Its initial value is twenty. And then we have a second company, Gerbil Energy which is losing value, so 1 minus 0.11, 11% also per week, so T over one week. Its price was 120 when this whole thing got started. So they want to know after how many, this is your final stock price, after how many weeks will they be the same? So we would just set them equal to each other, which we don't know how to solve algebraically, we can only solve graphically. So I'm going to graph both functions and see where they cross. So the wind power will be 20 times 1.04 to the x power. And this will be 120. And then 1 minus 0.11 is 0.89 to the x power. For my window here, I want to go, I'll go out 52 weeks just to see how long it will take. Um, and my final value of the stock, my stock values are somewhere between 
uh, 0 and $120. So I'll just go from 0 to 120 and take a look at where these two functions intersect. So second trace intersect will tell me exactly what I need. So that's happening after 11.5 weeks. So the point was 11.5 and 31.4. So after 11.5 weeks, both stock prices will be $31.40. So that answers both questions from above. On six, we talk about half-life, which is a new concept for us in math, but hopefully you've run across it in science where you lose 50% of the radioactive substance's um, life in a certain amount of time. So this one says that we have a radioactive substance with a half-life of 20 years, which means we lose 50% of the material every 20 years. And we have an initial amount and a final amount. They want to know, we know that we lose 50% every 20 years. This wants us to figure out, well, then what's, how much do we lose after one year? So again, just like in the beginning, I'm just going to plug in a 1 for that and type this in. So 1 minus 0.50 raised to the 1 over 20th power. And I get 0 0.9659 the T over 1. I've just converted the formula to showing that I looks like I'm losing almost 4%, not quite. So 1 minus that answer. I'm losing 3.4% per year. So if you see half-life, make sure you know it's losing 50% every time. They won't tell you the rate. You have to know that from the terminology half-life. Okay, last one here. Glo global warming studies show that the average annual high in Austin is 80 degrees Fahrenheit and it's increasing by 1.5% every 12 years. So the annual high average is 80 and it's 1 plus 0 0.015, increasing by 1.5% every 12 years. So then they say, by this model, when will the average annual high temperature reach 80? Which is obviously not what I meant because it started at 80. So let's change that to 85. So obviously global warming. So we're going to divide both sides by 80. Log both sides. And that will allow us to bring that out in front. T over 12 will go out in front of the log of 1.015. We'll divide out our log over. This will give us that. And then to get T all by itself, we'll multiply both sides by 12. So average high is 80, but global warming is happening. So it'll get to 85 within how many years? I guess it's a long number of years, but in the grand scheme of the age of the planet, it's probably not long at all. So there's the log divided by the log. Take that, multiply it by 12. Well, this says 49 years, so that's not long at all. The nearest year. Okay, so you have two homework assignments tonight, just because I kind of combined two and one. So why don't we do... Um, both homework assignments, but do the odds, and then you can save the evens for additional review.